it's good old Mrs. Brighton again, and I've got one of my favorite stories to share with you. It is Airmail to the Moon, and it's by Tom Birdseye, and the pictures are by Stephen Gamble. Brace yourself. She's a country girl. My name is Aura May Cotton of Crab Apple Orchard, and last night, somebody stole my tooth. Down at the creek of catching crawdads when it started tingling, kind of like if you missed your toast and peanut butter and bit your teeth together really hard instead. That was three weeks ago. I was popcorn in the pan, excited for sure that tooth was gonna fall out any second. But that all that's what I call my daddy, <laughs> says not to milk the cow when she's asleep, which is crab apple orchard talk for not blabbing to everybody about something before you're sure of what you're blabbing about. So I did not tell a soul. Then last Monday, Monday, while fetching the mail at the country road, I stuck my tongue out at that pesky neighbor of mine, Marietta Bean, and gave her a big raspberry like this. <laughs> With vibration from my tongue, flap it against my teeth, pop that chomper of mine as loose as a goose on ice skates. So I told the world about my first tooth of coming out whether they wanted to hear it or not. By Thursday that tooth was so wobbly I was just hanging on by one root and a little flap of skin. I could push it all the way out between my lips with my tongue and help mama slop the hogs at the same time. Oreo, mama said to me, Oreo's my nickname, just like the sweet cookie I am. Don't flop that tooth out when you're working. It reminds me of your cousin Cyrus before he got his braces. So I kept that tooth inside my mouth, worrying it like mad with my tongue. Then, Friday night, right after my big brother Bo Dean and my little sister Kelsey Ann got into a fight at the dinner table over whether Arlene's pigs really kneel and pray before they eat, that loose tooth of mine fell right out of my mouth, plop, slanted right in the middle of my spaghetti. Mama said, and be sure and put that tooth under my pillow. That way the tooth fairy would come and get it and give me some money. Money. Shoot. Howdy. Mama didn't say how much, but I figured it had to be at least a thousand dollars or maybe even a hundred dollars. I was so excited that I hurried to bed as quick as a dropped cat just so I could dream about all the things I was gonna buy. But like I said, somebody stole my tooth. So I guess I dreamed all night for nothing. <sighs> First thing in the morning, I discovered the crime. I ran lickety-split to find Mama. She was in the root cellar, up to her elbows in rutabagas. Mama, I exploded, is the tooth fairy a crook like the old Hester Jenkins that stole the parking meter from in front of the county courthouse? Mama jumped back, eyes as big as sausages. Why, no, Oreo, the tooth fairy is as honest as flowers in the spring. That's what I thought, I fumed. Well, then somebody besides the tooth fairy stole my tooth. Somebody so crooked they screw their socks on every morning. And when I catch them, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha and send a mail mail to the moon. Mama looked at me real hard. Oreo, she said. I don't think anybody would steal your tooth. Maybe the tooth fairy is putting it on a string with other teeth to make a beautiful necklace. That's what I've heard she does. She probably forgot to leave you some money and will remember tonight. That did not seem likely to me. What good is a tooth fairy that forgets? Why don't you go ask your daddy, Mama suggested, seeing how upset I was. Maybe he knows something we don't. Aha, I thought. He's a real thinker, my dad always. Why, he even sells watermelons to the grocery store. He knows mighty near everything. I heard dad all before I spied him. He was out by the tire swing, shaving and singing at the same time. 
which is mighty dangerous if you ask me. Half his face was shaving cream, the other half was as smooth as a baby's belly, as my daddy liked to say. Oh, I yelled, some crook stole my tooth, and when I catch him, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha and send him air mail to the moon. Dad all looked at me real hard. Oreo, he said, I don't think anybody would steal your tooth. Maybe the tooth fairy has it and is grinding it up in a big machine. That tooth dust might come out as money. Then the tooth fairy could use it to buy you some real estate, like one of them condominiums in Miami Beach. Dad all sauntered over the back porch steps and sat down. He was thinking about the tooth fairy, money machines, and condominiums, I figured. It was all a who'd have thought it to me. What would I do with a condominium in Miami Beach? Yep, tooth dust, Dad all said. Dust, I kind of shouted, but Dad, oh, somebody stole my tooth. Dad, all rubbed his chin and nodded. Why don't you go ask your brother? He usually knows more than he tells. Aha, I thought, heading for the barnyard. My brother Bodine is as ornery as a bull in a beehive, and he lost two teeth last week when he fell out of the hayloft. I'll bet you he stole my tooth and glued it straight up in his own mouth. I'm gonna get that boy, I vowed, and when I do, I'm gonna open up a can of gotcha and send a mail mail to the moon. I did not steal your tooth, Oreo, Bodine said, calmly crawling out from under the corn crib. What would I want with girl teeth anyhow? They don't fit boys. I had not thought of that. Are you sure you didn't just give it to the tooth fairy? No money down. Why would I do such a stupid thing? I demanded to know. That is ridiculous. Bodine eyed the hen house. He was looking for his pet snake, Fluff. The tooth fairy saves teeth to give to babies, right, Oreo? Not according to Mama or Dada. She don't. Well, according to me, Bodine Cotton, she does. That's so they can chew on rocks and shoes and stuff. Bodine, you're ornery, I reminded him. Talking about babies like that. <clears throat> yep, he whispered as he snuck in the hen house door. But I'm right. Where do you think Sister Kelsey Ann got her teeth when she was little? Ah, I thought. Maybe Bodine has a point. Kelsey Ann is as ornery as Bodine plus ten ten. She has to be the one that stole my tooth. I'll get that little diddle do, I roared. The tooth fairy, Bodine asked, sticking his head out of the chicken house. Fluff in one hand. <clears throat> Scared, hairy chicken squawking and flying everywhere. No, Kelsey Ann Cotton. <clears throat> when I do, I'm going to open up a can of gotcha and send her air mail to the moon. I yelled up the backyard apple tree. Give me my tooth. I know you stole it. Pig feathers, she said, hanging down from her knees on a tree limb. I'm as sweet as roses in the snow. The tooth fairy steals teeth, not me, Oreo. She makes them into doorknobs. Didn't you know that? Not according to Mama, Dad, or Bodine, she doesn't. You took it, I shrieked. She does too, cause I didn't, Kelsey Ann snipped. Does not you did? Does too, I didn't. Does not you did, Kelsey Ann giggled. <laughs> I bet you threw it away, Oreo. It's probably in the bottom of the garbage can, stuck in the middle of a blob of leftover scuddy. That's how forgetful you are. That tooth will never be a doorknob. That did it. I was so mad I was ready to scream. Nobody really knew what the tooth fairy was up to. Nobody was a bit of help, and nobody was the lop eared rascal that stole my tooth. I was just about to pop my cork clean out of Cramp Apple Orchard. That's how mad I was. 
But instead, I just sit there, look at my up, down, side, down sister. I started to cry. Loud and long. Big tears dreaming down my face. Tasting like salt. I didn't want to cry. Just couldn't help it. Now, we cottons banter and shout and squabble and argue at one another a fair amount, just like any self-respected family. But if there ever comes a cotton bawling real tears of grief, the rest come a-running to help. Hey, ho, howdy. In a flash, Dad, oh, Mama, Bo, Dean, Kelsey Ann, and even my pesky little neighbor, Marietta Bean. We're at all my side in five seconds flat. Somebody stole my tooth, I sob, crying harder than ever when I catch up. I'm gonna open up a can of gotcha and send them airmail to the moon. And I stuck my hands down deep in my pocket, so I look like I really meant it too. My name is Ora Mae Cotton, a crab apple orchard, and my face is hot. My toes are curling, and right now I feel like a possum up a plum tree. I'm as embarrassed as a zebra without stripes. You see, there's this little hard thing in the bottom of my pants pocket. It's right where I left it. I wonder if the tooth fairy ever sends motor mouth kids like me air mail to the moon. I hope not or I'd be on the moon right now. Thanks guys and we'll see you the next time.